for um, Ethan, for people that don't um, are familiar with you, can you explain what you do in a couple sentences? Sure. Uh, so I wrote a book during the pandemic. Uh, it's called The Next Gold Rush. Basically, when I got into cryptocurrency in 2018, um, I was working for a startup and they were just like, we want to do an ICO. And like, you know, I didn't know anything about crypto at the time. So I was like, all right, I'll just do some research. And then I fell down the rabbit hole and I came out of the rabbit hole with this big idea for social currency that doesn't exist yet. So it took me until the pandemic to be like, how can I scale this idea and get it out there? And so that's why I decided to write a book explaining it, um, which I'll be talking about today. And then now I'm kind of in this like interesting web four space where I just feel like that's the future of what cryptocurrency will be. And it's exciting to be like on the cutting edge. I mean, everyone's like doing something really awesome. So I'm not saying that what I'm doing is going to be like, I'm just saying it's a different awesome thing that I'm working on. So, yeah. So, um, a lot of people obviously hear the phrase Web3 thrown around a lot. What is Web4? Yeah, so it's funny because I actually learned about Web4 on Twitter. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess, because <laughs> I feel like uh, it's not a commonly used term yet because everyone has their own definition for it. So that's my uh, disclaimer before I explain what Web4 is. Uh, basically, I'll just like walk you through like the whole like, evolution of like the internet real quick okay. um it started off as like a static thing where like you just had like web pages you couldn't really interact with right that was web one that was like in the early to late 90s and then web two you had these giant companies that created like interactive websites like social media platforms but it was very really siloed and it was like giant companies like facebook and amazon google that like controlled all of the data so now you have like these centralized companies that are controlling everything, but you also had mass adoption of the internet. So that was web two. Web three is now the decentralization of all of those things. So basically everything is, you know, be, can be disrupted with web three, right? Yeah. Everything that we've, we're used to already can just be the same, but decentralized and like more, more peer to peer, like the internet was supposed to be initially. And now web four I, I believe Web4 is the ownership of the internet, right? That's the extra layer on top of Web3, which is basically the fact that you can do the same activities you're doing now on the internet, but you can actually be incentivized to, to do that with like tokenization and ownership of those activities. So if you're on Discord all the time and you're making a community grow, then shouldn't you be compensated for that those actions? That's Those are the, uh, the questions that I like to uh, address I hope that like there'll be more opportunities to just like maybe even quit your job and do internet full time where you just make money like through tokenization of communities and ownership of those communities. So that that's the exciting thing happening with Web4. Do you think that compensation just looks what does that look like? Does it look like different crypto for different communities or how how does someone envision that? So I, I'm a little biased here because I, I wrote a book explaining how I think Web4 will, will roll out, but um I think next, right now what's time. happening is the tokenization of communities, like you said. Um, I think there will be a more standard approach to Web4, which I'm hoping um, is my idea for Challenge Coin. So if you want me to explain what Challenge Coin is, um, I feel like the fundamental problem still that we haven't addressed in society is that people don't control their value, right? It seems like a very simple idea, but it really is like this fundamental thing that our economy hasn't fixed. Like, Basically, everything you do since the day you were born, your value has been decided by your employer, you know, your whatever like industry you're in, like basically like even the stock market, like all these things that you do, there's other entities deciding what your value is. But if we had a cryptocurrency that you could create, right? So like for maybe Ethan coin, for you guys, it would be John coin and bond coin. You guys could essentially crowdfund your lives. And through that way, you'd be kind of creating like a stock market for people. So instead of, you know, being reliant on someone else deciding what your time is worth monetarily, you would have your own currency where a market would be created around it. And so you could drive up demands just like we kind of see with like the ICO market. 
like you have people that are very interested in investing in these projects based off of, you know, the demand of them. So if you could, you know, basically turn that into like a peer to peer system where I'm just investing in you, John, and you're investing in me, like we're cutting out every middleman that exists, right? You don't need a business to, or a bank or government to tell you what your value is. Now it's just going to be us determining each other's value, which seems like the most simplest way of starting web four and like the metaverse and everything is that, you know, we should have this basic premise of cutting out all of these institutions that are just taking a cut. We don't need them anymore. We have decentralization. We have the blockchain. Why not just implement that like at scale? So everyone has their own currency and then build from there. That's what I think web four is building from the idea that every person now determines their own value. And then we don't need all these institutions anymore to take a cut from us. And so it's like creating a new economy on top of our existing economy. I have a question you might be able to answer. Um, so I made a TikTok kind of explaining basically what you just said. And uh, a lot of people in the comments, a huge concern for them was, so like, how is that going to stop people or organizations with already a lot of money from like buying 51% of a coin and still controlling what they want to control. Right. So I, I hope, cause this is still like an idea. Like I just wrote a book about it. I haven't actually developed it yet, but in the book, I explained that I think that this stock market should be only for people. Like, I think this should be the first one where we don't allow bots. You can't like create a hedge funds here where like someone's doing, um, what's what's the marginal trading what's the high frequency trading like i don't want that kind of shit in this market i feel like we all have 24 hours in the day right even if you start off with the advantage of like already like having a lot of money you're still limited by your time right mm -hmm. so you shouldn't be allowed to game the system like we do in our current stock market and have you know computers basically manipulating the market i feel like the the most equitable way to create this market is that you have to verify your social identity, right? Like a proof of humanity to get into this. And so if you have a proof of humanity, then you have more of a level playing field where even the like, you know, Jeff Bezos is of the world who have all the money in the world, they're still limited by their time. And so they're not going to have the time to, you know, research all of the good early investments of people. Right. And I don't think you, this, this market would even be worth his time anyways. So um, people that have already won in our current system, they don't need this new economy. This isn't for them, right? They already have, you know, taken advantage of our politics, our banks, like they've won, like they don't need to rig another economy. I think having this economy only for people where you need to be like present, like not have some computer or like, you know, have another person do everything for you, um, I feel like that's going to be essential to creating a successful economy here, which is why I wrote a book about it, because I can see how this idea could turn into that bond. I, I feel like it's very easy where someone could be like, oh, this isn't this doesn't seem that complicated. Let me just throw this together real quick. And then it turns into this huge dystopic thing where we have basically the same system that we already have. But now it's just, you know, with the illusion of like decentralization, I'm really hoping that by talking about it now, like before it's created, that we approach this the right way, which would be cutting out all of the things that have rigged our current systems. That's what I'm trying to avoid. That's a really interesting model. Would you would you cap it? Would you have a monetary like uh, wealth cap, or is it or is it not matter more about how much someone how much capital someone has? You know. Uh, that, that's a good question. I, I don't know, to be honest. I, yeah. I feel like based, based on what I've considered, like, I don't think a wealth cap would be necessary. Um, I, I feel like it's honestly the most free market we would ever have, right? If it's, you don't have like an SEC getting involved telling you to like to stop, then really it's just supply and demand, right? So if people don't want to invest in you, they can sell your coin. If you, if people feel like you're overvalued and your coin is overvalued, and maybe, you know, Elon Musk, for instance, has an Elon coin and people are like, well, Tesla is really overvalued. And that's pretty much all he's getting his wealth from is Tesla. And he's already selling Tesla stock. So maybe I should just sell my Elon coin. Like that's that's what will probably happen is that it will naturally like kind of correct itself. So I'm hoping that 
there doesn't need to be a cap. I think I think people will be the judge of whether or not people are overvalued or not because it's it's like a stock market, like I said. How will um, how do you think most people will um, migrate to this decentralized web? Because um, because all this all this uh, decentralization web three web four stuff is like on the back end, and the average Joe just doesn't care. Like, mm-hmm. what is going to be the thing to push everybody over to the next step? Do you think? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, a lot of conversation I've had about like mass adoption. Uh, people always think that NFTs are going to be like the next thing for mass adoption, right? Like, there's there's always things that get people get people's interest. Um, but fundamentally, if we wanted like billions of users into that Web three space, we need something that every person has a stake in, right? Like, if people don't understand like Ethereum. And they haven't even taken the effort at this point to look into Bitcoin. Why would they start now, right? Like Bitcoin keeps going up. It's like, you know, hit like an all-time high of over 60,000, right? But if people are still like, oh, that's too complicated, then Bitcoin's not going to be the reason they enter the space, right? So what is it going to be? I I feel like something like a social currency could be the thing. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't want to like presume anything, but... I feel like if every person had their own coin, right? And that coin could be connected to their social media profiles. Basically it reflects their digital reputation. Maybe they create TikToks and instead of a Patreon where you can donate to them, now you have a currency you can invest in, right? It fundamentally changes the relationship between the influencer and follower from a donation model to an investment model. I think that shift in thinking would be very transformative and would, would interest a lot of people and i i hope that that will help with mass adoption but um i think at the end of the day like regulation will probably be the thing that determines whether or not everyone starts using cryptocurrency or not yeah i was racking my brain around that that thought and i was trying to think of a way because like your grandma probably wouldn't be interested in crypto because of like currency incentive you know and there's always the currency incentive, which is kind of like like monetary incentive for getting into crypto, which is probably like why 60%, 50%, a good portion of people are into crypto and blockchain tech. Uh, maybe it started with speculation and it turned out into like, oh, this is really cool tech or the other way around. But I, I was, I'm trying to actively think how and why people that are non-tech savvy and not super incentivized by speculation would be interested in getting into crypto or blockchain like if if your grandma your grandma probably like at this point uses a phone but she doesn't know how the internet work and she doesn't really care but there's things that live there that she's still into and will actively engage in where people on the blockchain right now that doesn't really happen yeah i so have you guys heard of the adoption curve it's, it's like an entrepreneurship um, thing. So like right now we're still in the early adopter phase for Web3, like decentralization. Like if you're in this space, you're still very early into, I think, what is it like? Not even like 300 million wallets or something in the whole world. It's like we're yeah, still like, low. like not even close to a billion yet. Like we're still very early into the adoption of this space. So that being said, everyone that's in this space right now, um, we're not thinking about like, oh, this needs to be super convenient to me, right? There's a lot of things that like, even just, I have like a hardware wallet. It's not a very intuitive thing to own, like have the power of your own bank and the responsibility of your own bank. Like a lot of people that are in this space, they don't want that responsibility. They want to be able to like call their bank up and be like, I don't understand what I'm doing, help me. Like that convenience level, we're not there yet in cryptocurrency. So I think what you're talking about, John, we need a lot more infrastructure. We need a lot more convenience. We don't want people to be confused about what an NFT is and have to explain to them what a non-fungible token, like all of these conversations we're having, they're very rudimentary. And um, I think if you want your grandma to use this space, you don't want her to like understand what the blockchain even is. You want her to just be able to use it just like she, you know, press call, call like John, right? Like that's all she does, right? She doesn't think about how it's connected to like satellites 
and how the data is transferring across like the world. Like none of this is going through her mind because she doesn't need to. It's super convenient. That's where we need to be is that super convenient stage. But that's, you know, more of a late majority part of the adoption curve. And we're not going to be there for like maybe another decade. So um, it's also with, with products, like if there's not products that behoove people to use it or like a grandma to use it, then it, it doesn't really exist, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's especially, I was, I was listening to this, um, I was in a channel and it was like a, like a ladies night thing. And uh, some were like elderly, not elderly, but like 40 <laughs> year old females and some younger females. And, and just kind of like, even not even like female, but just non-tech savvy people. And they articulated to me in the server, but I was there. <laughs> um, like the, the, the friction that I haven't seen before, just because, you know, we probably grew up with technology. We grew up with, and like, even if you did grow up with technology, the people that are using just the mid-level blockchain, they're not devs, but... It's, it's somewhat intuitive to internet kids, especially like gaming and, and just new technology. It's somewhat intuitive and you can dive in and, and you don't like mind researching the like semi esoteric things that are like tech esoteric. Um, but like, I, I've never been articulated the, the thought of like, you know, this is, <laughs> it's pretty hard to understand. Um, and and that accessibility was very interesting to me to see, um, and and also what you talked about basically like customer service of blockchain stuff is also a very interesting take on it. Um, it, it goes kind of back to products of if you have good products that people want to use, but yeah. there's like that responsibility thing too. Like some people, a lot of people in this space do want the responsibility of like taking back responsibility from other institutions. Most people in the world probably don't want that responsibility, you know. Um, so it's, it'll be interesting to see where like a customer service for a blockchain product comes in. Yeah, you know, in my book, I basically structure every chapter as like a chronological, like talking about the past and how that informs the present, and then what I think that will do for the future, right? So that's that's the whole structure. So if you take that model and you apply it to our conversation right now, I feel like the easiest thing I can point to is like the early 2000s, right? Right, a, right after the dot-com bubble, right? The internet was still very basic. Like we still had, you know, people don't remember like what Amazon was. It was like, you can only order books and it was like, it wasn't two day shipping. It was like, you know, it took a long time and also it was costly. Like all these things people forget because it was like 20 years ago, right? And so people have like a short-term memory. But if you look at what the like 20 years ago looked like for like, the early ages of the internet that's basically where we're at now with the crypto space like we're we're actively like developing it and like building it up and it's changing a lot faster i think i've, I've seen a lot of graphs that like compare crypto adoption to like internet adoption and how we're basically on like the same adoption curve which is interesting i don't know how that will hold out in the long run but um i think if you look at 20 years ago the internet that's exactly where we're at right now it's it's very much like only for people who are early adopters who can are willing to take a risk on something that a lot of people don't understand, right? But also, it's not really built out yet. It's not convenient. It's expensive. Like you look at gas fees on Ethereum, like everyone's complaining about it, but that's so because expensive. we're still we still we're not there yet. We're not at like mass adoption. Once we get to the point where like gas fees are like not important, like where it's super convenient and like cost effective. And we have like, we're trying to build that with like Polygon and other like bridges. But even if you look past bridges, I feel like it's not convenient to the point where it's going to lead to mass adoption. Once we get there where it's just like, you don't even have to think about it and it doesn't take that much effort to like get into the space, that will be the inflection point. And we're not there yet, but it, I, I just like to point to like 20 years ago, like it wasn't that long ago, but the early days of the internet, do you remember dial up? Do you remember how you would have to oh, like, really, make that noise? It was so annoying. <laughs> I do. Like the AOL, like the eh, like it's just like just static noise. Couldn't That's what thought. the internet was. Like it, it wasn't that long ago. And we've obviously developed it a lot more. And it's super convenient. Now we're like having a podcast over Zoom. Like, who would have thought of that video calling that wasn't a thing 20 years ago? Mm. So we've we've made a lot of progress in like just the internet as a whole. 
And that's where we're headed with cryptocurrency and blockchain. But we just need more time. I feel like people are just they need more patience. It's going to happen. It's just not we're not there yet. Would you consider? Um, I don't want to say this bigger than the Internet. I like to I personally like to compare it to like the App Store because the App Store, people think it's insignificant, but it created like entire industries, created billionaires, millionaires, all that. Would you compare that more to the creation of the App Store or more like the beginning of the Internet? Compare what blockchain or crypto? Uh, just like Web3, like decentralized Internet ownership. Yeah, it's more yeah. internet for me. It's, it's less it's less product based, but it's still kind of an infrastructure where people can make the product. But I would like still say just internet infrastructure in my head. Yeah. It's hard to like I feel like parts of Web3 could be compared to the App Store. I think if you're comparing all of Web3, you would have to compare it to all of the internet. Um it's just different. You know, it's 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 weird to compare things that are just like fundamentally different and that it's like comparing like the modern car to like horses and buggy. Like it's it's really that much even different. more different than that. <laughs> yeah, it could be even more different. You're right. It's it's kind of just reworking how society views something, which is like digitalness. How do you? Um, Cause I I I I love trying to explain this to people that are li- that will listen, but some people just like they just refuse to get it. What's the simplest way you could explain this transition? You already kind of did, but like, how, how would you explain it to like a 10 year old, maybe, or better yet, a 55 year old <laughs> who like understands the internet, but like doesn't know where it's going? Yeah, it might be the same explanation. Um, let's see. I would say that the world is constantly changing and the internet is changing way faster than we could have ever imagined. And this is just the next iteration of what the internet is going to be, which is fundamentally just peer to peer, right? It's just people connecting with people and everyone else in between those two things is now not necessary, right? We don't need a bank anymore. We don't need the government anymore. We really cut out every um, middle middleman, right? Every person that tries to stop people from interacting with people on the internet. That's that's where we're at now. So we're finally back at, uh, in, at what the internet should have been originally, which is peer to peer. We're finally back at that original um, goal, and now we're just trying to like build it up for the world, right? A global peer to peer network. Awesome. Nice. I think that's a nice place to end, I think. Ethan Turr, the next gold rush, the future of investing in people. Uh, where would you like him to buy it? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I think Amazon, even though it's like the biggest conglomerate and I probably shouldn't be supporting them. Super um, centralized. Super centralized, centralized yeah. Uh, if you want to, I've actually had people buy it with Bitcoin and like, it, it's not the conventional route, but I'm also open to that if that's what your audience prefers, so uh just reach out to me on like twitter it's ethan underscore tur if you'd rather buy my book with crypto otherwise i would direct them to amazon let's let's build the 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 book chain dude you gotta you gotta build a decentralized book buying platform which is amazon in its infancy there you go yeah let's just like disrupt amazon i think that would be nice (laughs) damn that's like the library when you open the book and you see like all the people that like checked it out before That's, that's Stripe, Stripe idea a, out there for you guys. Stripe, the payment processing has a really cool uh online like publishing site. You might want to look at that. It has like 3D books. You might be interested. Yeah. Anyways, Ricker and Bond, everybody. Thanks for listening to Ethan Turr's interview. Go buy his book, The Next Gold Rush, the Future Investing in People. Ethan Turr on on socials. Uh, and we'll have links in uh, the podcast and Discord as well. I think you're in there, so we'll give you a nice cool role that says. R&B guest. Sweet.